<laughs> there don't... we go. Okay. Is this recording? Yes, it is. Okay. And hello, everyone. This is a super cool day for me because I got fam right now with me. This is my fam, my my blood, my people. She's my cousin, Patricia Ray. She's a New Yorker with Colombian background. She's an actress. She's in Hollywood. She's doing so much, but she's doing a lot for the Latino women that are being inspired. And you're going to be inspired today with her. I just love her. Patty, Patricia, Ray, our actress, our go, go, go girl. I thank you so much for being with us in the Monica Go podcast today, sweetheart. Oh my God. Um, thank you for, um, first of all, the platform to have the tenacity and the, you know, the spirit and the, to share your light, you know, because this is really what life is about, right? Because God gives us light and it's our, like, duty, our mission, our, uh, you know, our goals to shine it because some people don't, don't find their light for a long time. Mm. And when you can share your light and illuminate a path for others, that's what, that's what for me is purpose in life. You know, well, why, why struggle without sharing that journey and opening doors and, and, um, and making way for people who don't have the support system that I've been lucky enough to have, you know, not everyone could be an actress for 30 years without financial support, emotional support. Exactly. Um, the people cheerleading you and telling you that you can do it. And then to, to follow your dreams. Even my daughter, when I wanted to move to LA, this is a really beautiful story. I was planning to come to LA in 2001 because I had already been acting in New York and I wanted to come to Hollywood and get, you know, discovered. For sure. Um, <clears throat> 9-11 happened. Mm. And I, my mother started to make me doubt that I should come out here. She was like, what if LA is next? You've already been in a city that was targeted. You're going to leave your daughter with her father. What if you, you know, something happens? And she put that guilt and that, you know, maternal weight on me. And I said, you're right. You're right. I can't go. This isn't a time for me again, put my dreams aside to be the parent, to do the right thing. Right. And so I, stopped you know I canceled my flight I I got my lease car back and and then one day my my daughter she was probably like around 12 13 she said mom why aren't you going to Florida anymore and I said to her because I can't sweetheart and she goes wait a minute you're not gonna go to Florida um, I'm sorry Florida not Florida Los Angeles why aren't you going to Los Angeles and I I said, I can't. She said, you're not going to go to Los Angeles because you're afraid for me. She's like, get the hell out of here. She goes, if you <laughs> don't go and chase your dream, I'll kill you. She's just such a New Yorker. I love her. I know. Yeah. If so you she, gonna kill you. <laughs> she gave me the permission, you know, she, she, she gave me the freedom to chase my dream. And so many people don't have that. So many people don't have that, that support system, the people telling them, you know, it's okay. You can, you can put yourself first, believe in yourself, believe in your light because you inspire others, you shine and you, you touch other people's heart when you're living your gift, when you're sharing your gifts, you know, How, why did you, um, why did you want to jump that way, even though you felt guilty? Because when you're a mom, and especially a Latino mom, that you're trained to be like the super mom, the superhero, all the time there, available 24-7, and no matter what, and mm -hmm. you about yourself. So even though I've seen you since I was a little girl, you were always with that mentality of dressing up, of posing, of acting. I remember when you were modeling. Remember that time you had beautiful pics. There I have. I was the shortest model in Miami. 
<laughs> Little did I know that you couldn't be a model unless you were like over five five. So <laughs> that was a short lived dream. But you know what? I did. It didn't stop. You know, it's. A, I had. I had to share my light. Right. I had. I wanted to. In my heart, I knew that I. I made people happy when I made them laugh, when I shared my joy, when I shared my craziness, when I shared my antics, you know, and I said, I just knew intuitively that that was a gift. And when you have a gift, you you need to share it with the world because that inspires other people to share their gifts. If you're a painter, if you're an architect, if, if you're a beautiful cook, if you're a Whatever it is, do it with your heart, do it with your soul, because that's why else are we here in this world if it isn't to, you know, to, to live our life to the fullest, to our highest potential. I think that many people, because of so, so much heartache, you, you just said I was, I was in New York when 9-11 happened. I, I wanted to go to Los Angeles and people get stuck and paralyzed by scenarios that are probably external, but not only external, the ones that we have inside that we could probably be our own uh, worst enemy sometimes to yeah. be able to fulfill all these things that we have inside of us. And we don't become these, these really happy people, rejoice people until we start doing what we're called to do. Don't you think so? Absolutely. We don't give our lives go. Right, Monica, exactly. go. Exactly. It's like we 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 forget that if we don't live in our purpose and our higher purpose and step into our light, right? What service are we teaching our children? What are we teaching them to put yourself last, to put your needs last, to never to never chase your dream or your fulfillments or your joy or the things that bring you joy and pleasure in your life. They're mm -hmm. not as important as other people's. So that's not a great lesson to teach your children. I don't think that's not a way to live. That's a life half fulfilled for me, you know? So the other thing is I want people to understand that Sometimes you you have to put things aside, right? You have to cheer, raise your children and you have someone who's sick in your family or you have depression or whatever. And it's hard for you to climb out of that. But there is no time. There's no limit in this world. Nobody said you have to make it by 30 or 35 or 65 or, and wow. your life is over. No, you can reinvent yourself anytime, anytime you're inspired to. Wow, I think I, that's such that's so that's so deep. I love it. You could reinvent yourself. It doesn't matter the age, because yes. I know that you fought a lot with with casting stuff. They always thought that you were the Latino woman when you're mm -hmm. uh, you are fluently well spoken. You are an American woman, and they wanted you like to act for a Latino role all the time. And yeah, they wanted me to play the an immigrant, and I'm like, okay, I I'll I have lots of you know stuff on my resume and and my reels where I'm playing the victim and the Latina, and can you do the accent and can she speak Spanish? And I'm I'm like, I'll do it because you have to do things to make money and to also to get credits, you know. But then at some point you have to start pushing and you have to stay you have to stay true to yourself and say, well, I don't want to do that anymore. Can you please look for other work? And sometimes there's a scarceness where you have to, it, you know, you're not going to get that many auditions because the auditions that you want, you have to kind of say no to the ones that you do get and you have to wait for the right opportunities. And that causes fear and panic and desperation. And oh. you start, you start doubting yourself. Am I doing the right thing? You know, am I taking my career in the right direction? But when you stick to your guns and you say that I rather to, for me, it was so important to say, I want to showcase Latinas that live in America, who got an education, who speak proper English, who are um, American women with a Latin heritage that are progressing, you know, that they're fighting for their families, they're fighting for themselves. Those are the women I want to play on TV. And that's what I kept pushing my agents to do. 
till finally I, I started to play nurses, you know, uh, I got to play um, lawyers on, on all rise for three seasons. I got to play exactly. a judge, you know, but I had to take smaller roles in, in those, you know, uh, characters. But if you're there 100% and you are undeniable because you bring your light, they see that. And so that one day that I worked on all rise, cause I just was cast for one day. They were like, wow, she's so present. She's undeniable. Wow. I, we want that light back. And so they call me back for another episode. And then the second episode, they realized she's really funny. You know, she's sarcastic. <laughs> then they you call me me back for another. going to be a comedian. That still could be in your resume. That's something I, that you should do. I am not giving up on the comedy. Uh, I want to write myself a pilot, a sitcom. And I that's love what it. I'm. Yes, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm taking a writing serious? class. Yes. Uh, uh, um, I uh, love that. I mm -hmm. love that. Look, this is this is amazing, guys, because this woman, this woman has been doing tons of things in the in her acting career. And just if I, I'm gonna be on the first row seeing this happen. Because I've no. always, I've always loved her hearing her do her jokes and her crazy stuff. All this like, <laughs> thing coming in. I love it. That is such an amazing thing, really. Yes, yes. Because, like I said, I'm not waiting for someone to save me. I'm not so waiting anymore for someone to discover. I came to LA to be discovered. Well, 20 years later, guess what? I haven't been discovered. I've worked. I've been a working actor. I've done amazing jobs and beautiful things, but. I still haven't been discovered. So I, I'm going to make the show that I want to see myself in. I'm going to write the show that I want to see on TV. You know, a 50-year-old woman who already had her children and raised her family. And now she's going to have her second chance at life. So think of I Love Lucy, like in her 50s, past menopause, meets the odd couple. And her and her girlfriend... They're going to go out and they're going to take life and they're going to live it. They're going to give themselves the go in the 50s. I love it. Yes. I'm already your <laughs> fan. <laughs> that is going to be amazing. And I just well, I just can't wait to see. You can't take long with that because that would be something that would definitely catapult your career in another, I think so. another dimension. And mm -hmm. I can see you like I could see you right there. I could see you like top. Yeah. And Let it's me... like a pre golden girls, you know, the okay. golden girls were like 60s, yeah. 70s. These women are going to be like 50s, 60s. They're two best friends and they're, they're living the life they didn't get to live. You know, they're going <laughs> to, this woman has never had a job. She's been a very pampered woman. So she's going to have to like learn how to take care of herself and manage money and balance a checkbook and, you know, clock in and out of a real job. So we're going to see her grow into a, a person, you know, a self-realized woman. So there's going to be a lot of room for comedy. <laughs> oh, definitely. I know. I, I, I We have to act together sometime soon oh well once i once my show gets picked up i'll write you a role yeah <laughs> i'm gonna be in her movie yay yes. but tell us tell us all about about what was it it's gonna jump somewhere crazy but i think that not everybody had the opportunity to to act with uh with um what's his name Oh my God! It just blew my mind with Robert De Niro with all of these. Oh people. gosh! And yes, how are they behind the scenes? Because what was the name of the movie that you acted in as a Latino Colombian woman with Robert De Niro, with Robert Williams, and all these beautiful cast members? The Big Wedding. The Big Wedding. I remember La, gr La Gran Boda. Yeah, that's my cousin. I love it. <laughs> wow, that movie was like. It was so much fun. Um, I've never been on a big budgeted film like that, you know, with trailers. Like I would I would walk out of my trailer and I would right in my face was Robert De Niro's pop-out trailer that had a living room, 
a bar, a full, like a king size bed with a whole shower in there. Mine was just like a little, like one third of a banger where they have like, you know, one, two, three next to each other in the same trailer. So you, you have a little place to sit, a little desk and a bathroom, you know, that's, and I was very grateful for that, but you know, it was, it's like, you see the, the imbalance of like, how much money they spend on certain actors and how little money they spend on certain actors. And you can't take offense, you know, because you have to remember that this opportunity could take you somewhere else. Um, This is part of the journey, you know, embrace everything as it comes and, uh, and learn, you know, but it was a really great experience. Were you, were you able to connect with like sit down drink a wine or drink some water and talk about life who was that person in that movie that you were able to be you and connect with that person um I think I got to to have those kind of moments with um Diane Keaton Robert De Niro and uh Susan Sarandon a little bit because I forgot she's in the movie too they did a lot of dinners, you know, like uh, Robert De Niro hosted a dinner at one of his very wealthy friend's house. Um, and we all got to like have this amazing, beautifully catered, you know, meal and sit down and chat and talk about art and talk about politics and talk about life and just see them on a, on a personal level as people, you know, not as these famous icons that they were and how humble they are you know Mm. and just how um how they don't really talk about acting you know it's not like you're sitting there talking to them about oh like you know who's on tv and who are they just they talk about real things you know things that matter to them about their children you know about what's going on in their lives and about you know uh, robert de niro's son was going to going to college at the time and you know he talked a lot about his family so to just be with them as real people was very refreshing and eye-opening for me wow that's beautiful would you would you would you um would you say to someone right now with all of these 30 years that you've sensed and you think that you haven't been discovered because still you have so much to give what would you say to men and women in any career because acting is 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 a beautiful career we bring life and and stories into people's minds we we Mm -hmm. tell these stories probably that they identify themselves with but that they haven't had probably the opportunities in life that you have had and that sometimes they're just they're just saying that's not for me i just i i just can't find it anymore what Mm -hmm. would be that catapult moment that you would just bring it out and pull the person by the hair. Hey, get out of that darn depression or get out of yourself. And mm-hmm. what would you mm-hmm. say? Um, number one thing for me is faith. Without faith, I couldn't have survived. All the rejection, all the doubt, wow. all the fear all the longing Hmm. that strong strong faith that our grandmother that Hmm. your aunt instilled my grandmother Lillian everything se logra con amor con fe and I just always went back to that because God gives you the tools and the gifts and if you don't believe that that's why you were put here, that the he, then you're saying that he made a mistake. Wow. Wow. That was deep. Yes. And so you have to believe in your heart and your soul and yourself that, that your purpose is, was given to you and you have to have the faith to sustain it so that you can realize it right because it can happen right away or it can happen in 30 years or it can happen in 40 years look at um the beautiful chinese woman who just won an oscar 
uh, Michelle Yeoh in her 60s, okay? She could have given up too. People told her to retire. People told her to, you know, you're too old to act. How do you... How do you have the, the audacity to tell someone you're too old to have a dream? You're wow. too old to have a skill. You're too old to create. Because the number one thing for me in life is it, the minute you stop creating as a human being is the minute you stop connecting to the universe. Because we are all creators. We were put on this planet to create. And creating on a small level gives you the same fulfillment as creating a bridge. If you create something with love, a meal, a gift, a, a letter, mm. that's still using your energy, your light, right? You're filling that with your light and then you're passing it on. So when you're not creating, you're not vibrating in the, in the same uh, strength and light as the universe. And that's what we're here for. To create, to create love, to create compassion, to create connection, to create joy, to help other people surrender fear. You know, one of the things that really has helped me throughout the years is my practice, my yoga practice, my spirituality. I, I was raised Catholic. We were raised Catholic and you know, my grandmother was always like, Recele a Dios, you know, pray to your to God, God will answer your prayers. As a young girl, I was molested by my stepfather. And I stopped believing in God because I would talk to him and I would say, Why are you doing this? Why are you allowing this to happen to me? Mm. And it it made me so sad. And I carried that sadness throughout my whole, for a long, long time into my adult life. And I used it in my characters. So acting for me was a way also to release that emotion and allow it to flow out of me so that I didn't constantly have it like stuck in my heart and my, in my organs and my being. Yoga allowed me to connect again with my spirituality without necessarily claiming God, without having to say, well, this is the God that I felt abandoned me. I, I found that I had to be connected to the higher source, to my highest self, whether you call it God or Buddha or Allah. I had to remember that I am the light, right? And the light is in me. And if the hardship comes, it's not because I've been abandoned. It's because I have to supersede this, this trauma. I have to remember that I can rise above this and that my faith and my spirituality is what helps me survive it. Exactly. Not, not that it makes it disappear and goes away is that it helps me survive with intact with my soul. Hmm. I think that's so beautiful to be so vulnerable right now because um, I understand that that scenario so, so in depth as well. Um, and I, I, as you said, you, we were all, we were both uh, raised Catholic and I, as well, like you, went through hardship and, and molestation. And and when a child at certain age doesn't even know what's happening with their life, that an adult that you're supposed to have them as a as a as that uh, that strength for you, and the then protector, for, exactly mm -hmm. that protector. And you see all these things happening to you. For me, it was it, I understand where you're going from, uh, calling going to, but for me, it was like. I was I was a Catholic, but it, it doesn't really matter the religion. What I understood in my life, in my own in my own walk, is that that God really was there, but He's not He's not He uses our 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 most saddest moments to build us up, even though we we were broken. But He was my healer. God was my healer. Jesus was my healer, and my relationship with God has been such an intention that 
that I know that I was mad with God at a point in my life. But mm -hmm. when he showed me that it wasn't him, it was them and things happened. But the way that he restored my soul, my dignity, my my person, my my childhood, my my being me being a woman, a girl, being that that person brought so much liberty into my life. And I am so thankful with God because of that, because he brings in in a way I know everybody probably connects in a different way. But for me, Jesus is my savior. Jesus is the lover of my life. And I'm so I'm so restored and, and I'm still in the process as you that you find that 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 light in the in the in the way that he brings us that nourishing and that healing and he goes back to your past and heals your past so you can live your present in such a, a an in-depth way so you could fulfill your future mm -hmm. and um, and I love this moment because not everybody opens up a vulnerably in, in these details that still probably could be hurting but I think God is the healer that even when you look back to your past and you go, wow, this happened to me. How could this happen to me? But wow, God, thank you, because this is not me. This is what the what the enemy or the obstacles or the killer of my dreams, the killer of my purpose wanted to to have mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. And I am I am thrilled. That's why I love mentoring. And that's why I love discipleship. And I love coaching because women that are broken I could relate to them so easily because mm -hmm. I was there one day and God, you know, put me together and showed me who I am. I am his, pri I am his princess. I am, I am his inheritance. He loves me so much as he loves you and he loves everyone. And he says for so much, God loved the, the world, not some people, mm -hmm. the yes, world. Yes. you know, and I think that today probably women like, like Patricia Ray, a beautiful actress um, that she's given so much. She's been working so hard. Probably you could identify with her testimony, with what she's saying. But still that burden that why did he do that to me? Why do people do wrong things to other people? And the world is like that, guys. Oh, like, yes. And are, it's, are you it's, resilient enough? Yes. And that's the the true test of faith, right, you know, is to, is to still believe, you know, even because everyone has hardship, things, bad things happen to everyone, no one is excluded, you know, no one gets a free pass. But every time that something bad happens to you, if you abandon your faith, how are you, how are you going to have faith when good things are happening to you? You know, you have to, faith isn't something that you pick and choose. You can't, you know, you can't believe when things are great and not believe when things are not great. That's this consistency that that's kind of holding you up, that keeps you surviving all of the traumas that life brings you. That's the consistency and the faith that you can share with others because everyone has, you know, depression and sadness and, um, you know, uh, trauma from that other people put upon you. Right. Exactly. exactly. And I, but and if I you, if you keep that inside of you, first of all, through anger, which anger like really fueled me for a really long time. And but anger was keeping me tied to the past, right? It kept me in the pain and the active pain. And I was like, I don't want to suffer anymore. I don't want to be sad anymore. I don't want to be mad anymore. I forgive you. I forgive you. You didn't know you, you, you didn't have someone who loved you. You didn't have someone who taught you to be kind. You didn't have someone who taught you to be strong on your own. So you had to take my light. But that's okay. I have enough light for the both of us. I can let you go and I'm going to live. And how beautiful. That is so beautiful. You know, to be able to forgive. I think it's one of the most courageous things that any human being could do. And, uh, you know, guys, everybody that will be seeing this and listening to this podcast, if you have that burden that you haven't been able to forgive, 
This is a woman right here that has gone through a lot, but was able to set herself free, not because of the other person. It's because of herself. And yes. all of us, all of us have a doses of faith given by mighty God, the creator of this universe. He all gave us, he gave us all a measure of faith. But you say, I don't have the faith that Patricia Ray, this beautiful actress has. But yes, you do. You do have a faith, but you're using your faith in the wrong way. You're not using your faith for, for your blessing and to please God. You're using your faith in a negative, just thinking that you can't do it. Just thinking that God is not there for you. Just thinking that you can't forgive. And that is using your faith in your negative. Patty, would you would you close up with with something that will with the words that will inspire women that are going through or even men? Because it's this is not only a women's thing. This is a men thing. Yes, I think it's a human experience thing. Definitely go for it. It's all you, baby. I think that the you have to live in your light. Mm. That is our blessing. And the more you live in your light, the more you can share your light and the more you can embrace the moment because mm -hmm. no one can find you in the darkness. You have to turn yourself on every day. And that's what I do. I get up. I have a, I connect with my highest self, my highest God, my energy. And I, 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 I thank the universe. I thank I'm blessed. I ground myself. I say, I'm going to go out there and be compassionate and be joyful and try and be of service to someone today. And just those little acknowledgements every day gives you power. It gives you power of, over your own domain, over your own destiny. And you can empower yourself. You know, don't live in the darkness. Turn on your light. Find your light. Don't live in the darkness. Turn on your light. Stop living in your past. These are the words exactly. of Patricia Ray, one of our Latino actresses here in the U.S., her movies have gone around the world and still she has not thought that she's been discovered. But today, <laughs> you and I have discovered parts of her life that have been so beautiful that we that we could identify because we all go through hardships. And today's yes. inspiration by Patricia Ray through the Monica Go podcast because you have to give it a go. So here where we are, she's in California. I'm here in Florida. Let's give it a go, people, because together we could do it. God bless you all, yeah. wherever you are. Love God you bless people. you.